All right. So we need to prove that the rational numbers are a field. And in order to be a field, we need to satisfy all of these lovely properties. Uh, you have two operations. Usually it's addition and multiplication. And they have to, so under addition, they have to be closed, associative, commutative, identity, and inverse. Um, and cool. All right. So we take our rational numbers. And we first check to see if, you, if your rational numbers are distributed. And you're like, yeah, distributive properties works for rational numbers. Remember, rational numbers are just fractions. You got that word ratio in it. If you forget what your rational numbers and stuff are, I have another video for that. So look at that. So you're like, OK, yes, rational numbers are distributed. Perfect. Now you're talking about addition. Yeah, rational numbers are closed under addition. If you add any two rational numbers, you get a rational number. Totally associative, there's nothing funky there. Totally commutative, they have an identity element of zero and an inverse element of negative one. They're fine. You go to multiplication now, and you say, yeah, if rational numbers are closed under multiplication. If you take any two uh, rational numbers and multiply them, you get a rational number. And I've got another video with the, these properties laid out. Um, they are totally associative, um, nothing funky there, nothing funky with commutative. They have an identity of 1 and an inverse of 1 over the number. So rational numbers, not a problem. They satisfy all of these. Um, so now they say that integers aren't supposed to be. So let's see where they fail. So remember, integers are pretty numbers, like uh, both negative and positive. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, both ways. And you ask yourself, are integers distributed? No problem there. Are they closed? No problem there. Associative, nothing funky going on. Commutative, nothing going on. Identity, not a problem. Inverse, not a problem. Multiplication, closed, OK. Associative, OK. Now, because it makes it up to here, and I should have mentioned it before, this is the cutoff for a ring. So right now, your integers have made it. They are ring status. They need these extra three bonus properties in order to qualify for a field. Let's see if they can do it. So uh, commutative, integers are totally commutative, nothing funky there, identity, Fine, the identity property is 1. Inverse, though, this is where a lot of things fail, is at this multiplicative inverse. And it's not satisfying this one down here. Darn it, it made it so far. But the reason it's not satisfying this one is you're thinking, well, wait a second. If I took like an integer 3, let's say, it does have an inverse element, right? 1 over 3 would be its inverse, because if you multiply that, you get the identity 1. Fine. But one third, not an integer anymore. This inverse element must be contained in the original set. So since one third is not an integer, and that would have to be the inverse element, um, it doesn't qualify for the uh, uh, requirement of a field. So it doesn't make this final check. Therefore, your integers are a ring because they satisfy up to here, but not a field because they don't satisfy those last two.